Well, hello, my lovelies. It's Murky Meg here. It's Monday, the 19th of August, and if you have been living under a rock, especially here in the UK, because for some reason it's bloody everywhere, Harry and Meghan have been visiting Colombia for four days, and it's been full-on love-bombing the absolute crap out of anybody that's important. I say love-bombing, but it's mainly love-bombing from her, not Harry. Harry looks as miserable as sin. He's trapped with a situation of his own making, quite frankly. Let's call a spade a spade, shall we? This was their attempt to try and recapture what they failed to do in the royal family. Quite frankly, because they weren't up to the job. They wanted the trappings of money rather than the status of actually being part of an institution, part of a dedicated duty and service to the nation that is Harry's. They didn't want that. They wanted money. Unfortunately, by leaving the royal family, they left all the pomp and wonderfulness that comes along with being part of that royal family. They are essentially trying to recapture what they couldn't hack. Now, they did the same in Nigeria, but this Colombian trip at least with Nigeria, it was kind of tenuously linked to the Invictus Games. But this seems to be just a strange vacation. And I might add, at the pennies of the Colombian taxpayer. But all is not sunshine and light, as they seem to try and make people want to think it is. Because quite frankly, this publicity overdrive this is nothing more than a PR exercise in trying to solidify that they are still working royals. They're not, but they want you to think that they are in their own way. Their PR propaganda overdrive, because th effectively that's what it is. It's propaganda because it's clear to see that Harry is absolutely miserable at the moment. And I really think the penny is finally dropping. Yeah, there's been moments where he's dancing and laughing and having fun and looking loved up with Megan. But I firmly believe, and this is just my opinion, that this is all for show. Now, I have to caveat this, with, and I've said this so many times on my YouTube channel, that when you're in a relationship with a malignant narcissist, you go through a cycle of abuse. A narcissist cannot contain the level of love bombing that's needed to maintain that adoration from their partner. It is a cycle, and it's always the idolization which is the love bombing, the making sure that you feel like the sun has finally shone on you and them and everything is right in the world and oh my god, they love me, isn't it amazing? And it is almost over the top saccharine sweet adoration. You are put on a pedestal and it makes you feel so blinking special. There's big gestures, elaborate gifts and you are showered with complete affection. That is the love bombing or idolization stage. We then go into the devaluation stage, where this is where you are swiftly taken off that pedestal and you are criticized, you are controlled, you are gaslighted, and it makes you lose your blinking mind because you think, hang on a minute, where's all the love gone? Why am I being treated like this? Why am I being abused like this. Now, it doesn't, when I say abused, it doesn't mean physically abused. There are so many levels of abuse. Mental abuse is one of them. And you are physically discarded and you feel like you are in a cold, empty room because all that light that the narcissist has actually shone on you in the love bombing stage has completely been taken away and it actually makes your head spin. Then comes the rejection. You feel completely rejected from this person. You wonder what on earth has happened. They are less interested in you and the love that was once there. You are literally tripping over your mind thinking, what the hell have I done wrong? And that's where the gaslighting comes in. You actually kind of think, actually, what have I done wrong? And sometimes you ask the narcissist, what have I done wrong? 
and that gets put back on you. Don't be so crazy. You've done, I've done nothing wrong. You've done nothing wrong. Everything is absolutely fine. But you know deep down that there is something wrong, but you can't put your finger on why everything is going wrong. Why you feel like this. And if you ask them, the blame gets switched and put onto you. That's the gaslighting element. You're the one that's crazy. You're the one that's overthinking this. Everything is absolutely fine. Why? Why do you feel like that? And then what happens when you finally start to fizzle your brain thinking, I can't stand this anymore. The hoovering starts to happen. And this is where a narcissist will pick you back up and suck you back in by giving you that little bit of affection. And you think, oh my God, they really do love me. And they give you their time and their attention and their affection. And you think, oh, wow, they really do actually care for me. This is a manipulation tactic, which is used by the narcissist to suck a person back in to that relationship that they have started to mentally check out of because of the gaslighting and because of the lack of affection and the nasty comments. And to stop you withdrawing completely, the love bombing begins again. And that is a narcissistic abuse cycle. And I firmly believe that, and this is just my opinion, but I know that a lot of people actually agree with me, that we have seen a masterclass of narcissistic abuse during these four days of Columbia. Harry looks miserable. Meghan looks giddy with power. And that's exactly what it is. She's getting all the attention. She's getting that narcissistic supply of oxygen. And when a narcissist gets their oxygen supply from someone other than their spouse, that spouse gets ignored. Don't get me wrong, I don't feel sorry for Harry, not one bit. He is complicit in everything that is happening. He has been completely alienated from his family and they have been painted as the villains and he actually believes in that fact and has publicly said so. But I'm gonna ask you one question. If the roles were reversed, and this was being done to a female by a man, would anybody call it out? And I think the reason why nobody is actually calling it out is that because Harry seems to be a willing participant, but over the last four days, he doesn't seem to have been that at all. Now, there was a really interesting article in the media over the weekend where one of Harry's old buddies has actually spoken out. Apparently, this old pal has said that Harry is hiding anger and frustration beneath the surface as he would rather be in brick with his friends and family. Speaking to the Times, the friend claimed they are among a few who get the odd WhatsApp from him, adding, he's an angry boy. Things haven't turned out the way he wanted. I think he misses being here in Britain desperately and wants to be admired more. Anyone who knows him feels he'd rather be top of the pops here with everyone loving him as they do with William and Kate. Another source who has known Harry since his teenage years claims he is no doubt missing his former life of pubbing and enjoying the English countryside with friends as it was reported he may not receive an invite to his brother's coronation and that's It's what's being reported in the media at the moment. William does not want him anywhere near his own coronation when the time comes. This friend continues, he has ended up isolated from his family and most of his old mates in an environment where your friendships are not like the ones you forge as a young man. He used to love a night out in the pub and hanging out in the country with friends. Now, like I said before, I don't feel sorry for Harry one bit, but I have to highlight this fact that he has become so isolated from everything that he used to hold dear that the cracks are finally appearing because they have been so public over the last four days. Even though the PR has been on the level of North Korea, because let's face it, the pictures have been so controlled. I'm going to reference two very related Crazy Days and Nights blinds. One was on Friday and it says the illiterate one and her husband are charging so much to news outlets for their photos that the news outlets are losing money. No one wants to pay what they're being forced to pay. One glamour magazine was told that they would be allowed to take some of their own photos. They have not been allowed and have been forced to use ones provided by the foundation 
even though they don't match what was going on in real life. I remember what I said about narcissists and control. It's not just about relationship that this control is being forced onto. It's their whole persona of what they and how they want to be perceived by the world. And this is absolute 101 level narcissist control. And this is exactly why they left the royal family. They wanted full control of the pictures that were seen about them, the things that are written about them, because they didn't, in fact, like anything that the media was saying where well, they're in the royal family, so they had to shut it down. They now have full control over everything. But unfortunately, because they can't control everything, most people have cameras on their phones and pictures are all over social media of showing just the real story of what's going on. People aren't turning up. Colombians are taking to social media and voicing their absolute disgust at what is they are as the taxpayer having to pay these two pompous fake royals to visit their country when there is so much corruption and poverty and they're not very happy honestly Colum colombian twitter is wild and if you'd like me to do a video showing some of the responses just comment below and i will <laughs> honestly it is off the scale some of the things that they are talking about but unfortunately they can't control everything much like they want to do because they think that social media should be censored and controlled there's one video that actually shows that she barked at harry hand and much like a good little boy he grabs her hand there are multiple videos where she talks over him and he just goes quiet along with the videos showing that she is the forefront of everything and last night, Crazy Days and Nights posted this. It says the magazine that complained about the pricing gouging in the photos of the illiterate ones fiasco have now been told they won't be invited to the next trip, which is apparently already scheduled for a weekend surrounding Halloween. The thing is, this sort of thing is really going to anger the media even more. And then more and more stories, negative stories, are going to come out about them. You don't bite the hand that feeds you. And that seems to be something that Harry and Meghan have not learnt yet. Now, this blind was relating to Harper's Bazaar, who actually went along with them on the trip. And apparently they were told that they could come along and take their own photos, but were then told, absolutely not. You need to use our photos, not your photos. Oh, and by the way, you also need to pay us. So Harper's Bazaar were thinking, oh, we'll go along, we'll take our own photos, and then we'll also license them out. But unfortunately, that's not the case. They're having to buy them directly from Archwell, and Harper's Bazaar are not happy. And clearly, according to this blind, they're not very happy at all, are they? This whole thing has been about two things, and that's control and money. And that is exactly why they left the royal family. I'm going to end this video with a really interesting post on X from the British Prince. Excellent account. If you're on X, please do give him a follow. And he says, Meghan is Cersei because she has a narcissistic poker face. But Prince Harry always gives the game away. He can be a good boy and smile for stage pictures, but he's not happy. His controlling wife dominates everything. So him comfortably turning to another woman is no surprise. And this refers to them when they were watching some dancing on the first day I believe and he literally his whole body language you can see from this video he's physically turning away from her and puts his arm around the arts director of the National Centre for Arts in Bogota all you have to do is look at the body language and it speaks volumes so I would love to know your thoughts. Do you think it is a clever ploy to control the media by restricting who has access to all the official photographs that are coming out of Colombia? Obviously, you can't stop people taking photographs, even though hardly anybody turned up for them. Or do you think that this kind of tactic will eventually backfire? And more importantly, do you think Harry is miserable as sin and why? I personally know why, but I'd like to know your opinions. As always, I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell and also that like button. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers for all the tips and all the emails, DMs that everybody sends to me. It really is greatly appreciated. 
So thank you very much for watching once again.